and they're getting cold feet, and there's no way they can stop it. Well, and where is this going to lead, um, Bob? I, uh, uh, the one thing that the government was depending on, and uh, you heard Mr. Obama just say that, hey, we're out of money. So they're borrowing 50 cents of every dollar that they need to run the government right now. We're just talking about the infrastructure and the current setup. They're having to borrow 50 cents of every dollar to run the government, and nobody's buying anything on this planet that has anything to do with the, it's connected with the United States dollar. So where are they getting this money to run the government right now? Well, they will monetize, and how that will be done is the Treasury – which they've already begun doing, um, they will sell bonds to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve doesn't have any money, so they create money by giving the Treasury a credit, and they take a debit on their books, which means nothing at all. It's immediate monetization, which means it's immediately inflationary. No. Yeah. The no. Fed says they've only done $116 billion. I don't believe them. I think they've done all $300 billion already, and I think they'll do another $600 billion before the, the year is out just in treasuries. Well, I guess there goes the deflationary theory right out the window. We're going to hop right into hyperinflation. Jeez, weren't we talking about that a little while ago? We'll take the break. 800-313-9443. Tune in to the National Intel Report, the real talk radio show. We are back. So, let me understand this, Bob. Uh, the thing goes that, well, the treasuries are being sold to the Fed, or the, the United States Treasury is selling to the Fed. The Fed is buying the treasuries, but the Fed doesn't have any money. Well, even worse, I can, I can extend the daisy chain. Please do. The treasury is then taking the money and meeting their fiscal commitments, which are in deficit, for two reasons. They spent too much money in a big way. They admit to $1.8 trillion, but it's going to be two to $2.5 trillion by the time we get to 9.30.09, end of the fiscal year. Uh, that's all monetized. It immediately goes into the system and creates inflation. On the other hand, the Fed then takes the treasuries, and they can hold them. They can sell them into the market, or they can trade them for toxic waste. Now, there's lots of banks out there that got CDOs, collateralized debt obligations they like to get rid of. They like to trade them. So when they trade them, they can either hold them on the books or they can sell them. My guess is they would hold them on the books. But at the same time, they also have the option to go into the market and buy treasuries as well. <laughs> Now, maybe the Fed won't trade. Maybe the Fed will pay them for the toxic waste. Instead of paying them 10 or 30 or 40 cents on the dollar like they should, they might pay them 80 cents. But we don't know because they won't tell us. And that's why we need an audit of the Federal Reserve. But anyway, backtracking. So let's say they go in and they buy $900 billion, which they said they're going to do, with a toxic waste. They take the toxic waste and put it on deposit. They already have $2 trillion worth of garbage there now. So this will make $3 trillion. The banks then take the money and go buy treasuries. you got a double whammy effect here. It's relieving the treasury of the ability to not be able to sell their bonds to other people, specifically foreigners, because the dollar's plunging. And the debt keeps on getting bigger and bigger. And the foreigners and others want higher yields. But if we have higher yields, the real estate situation is going to get worse. 
<laughs> boy, are they in a corner. <laughs> but well, I suspect what's happening is the Fed pays the Treasury. The Fed takes the bonds. The, bed, the Fed takes the bond equivalent in money and buys the toxic waste on the proviso that the banks will go and buy treasuries in the market or from the Fed. And that's what's going on. Uh, we have a name for it, but I won't say it on the, on the radio. And it's not good. It's very, very, very bad, and it's going to get a whole lot worse. We may well, Bob, right. over the weekend, the Chinese government warned the Federal Reserve in no uncertain terms about its concern about the Fed's uh, zealousness in printing money. Well, you're right, and the Fed, again, is in a box and I can't get out, so the Chinese should keep their mouth shut because every time they open it, the dollar goes down, <laughs> and it makes their dollar investments worth a lot less. And my guess is the dollar is going to go from 80 to 40 on the USDX, which is a 50% haircut. And that means they're $2 trillion worth of U.S. dollar-denominated assets are going to be worth $1 trillion. Or so less. they best keep their mouth shut. Or less. But I think yeah. China's desperately trying to buy gold, and uh, they want to get at least 5%. they got 1% now of uh, a GDP, and they're going to be buying with both hands. None of their production is hitting the market. Uh, they're producing 282 tons a year. Uh, it hasn't reached market for five years, and no more is going to. The Russians are doing the same thing. Uh, even Venezuela is buying gold. And uh, they're trying, they, China, are trying to make deals with other sovereign nations, and they're trying to buy gold out the back door and gentlemen and have a hard time doing it it was okay yeah. three or four or five years ago so what is this going to do for the price of gold pray tell send it into the stratosphere that's what i thought what am i talking about real inflation adjusted gold prices and that would be six thousand eight hundred dollars an ounce since 1980 too bad I don't have any money to buy any gold. Robbie, you got any I spare think you're change? Gonna see, John, I think you're going to see another thing. What's that? I think that Taiwan is going to voluntarily join up with China. And I think that you're going to see other people, rather than Communist Party members, moving into important positions in China. And they will that will include people from Taiwan, uh, other Chinese... And some of the Chinese of long lineage, royal blood. And that's what I think the evolutionary process is going to be in China to make them more acceptable to the West. But, but hold on. The, the reason we were sold that we give China the most uh, favored nation status is that by dealing with the West and dealing with countries like the United States, that this is eventually going to show them the light and that they'll accept democracy as a, a replacement for communism. So that, but that's not what's happening at all. That they've already made their money hand over fist. Now they're losing it thanks to the United States. But uh, you're going to see, are you telling me you're going to see a shift in power here because of the economic? Uh, no, no, we're not going to see a shift in power. You're going to see a subtle shift in the distribution of who makes the decisions in China. China is, is controlled by O-line black nobility families. They have been in the past, and they probably will be in the future. They didn't get left out in all this. I mean, centuries ago, they made deals. Let's go to the phones here. Rob in Minnesota. Hello, Rob. <clears throat> Hello, John. Thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, kind of a question for Bob uh, about the mechanics of the market. Now, this has to do with, uh, and the reason I'm asking this is, um, Robbie asked the question uh, last week or the week before about, uh, uh, you know, reverse stock splits. And uh, back from the days of me watching CNBC and them saying, well, it's only a loser when you go to sell it. And uh, so I held on to some uh, things all the way down to where they have little cues behind their symbols now. 
And uh, so, you know, for example, WorldCom, which I had convinced myself, well, it's the backbone of the Internet. It'll never go away. Uh, and uh, so here's my question. Uh, with the naked shorting that they do at the top, you know, when they're uh, just unloading all this stuff and they're selling shares that don't even exist, now this is just strictly a hypothesis on my on my end. Do you think that these reversed stock splits down at the bottom are uh, a way for them to cover up all that naked shorting that they do when they're unloading the stocks when they're at their high? 